Once upon a time, there was a group of dads who started playing D&D. &D. This is their story. Welcome to D&D &D with Dads. We're sitting back and chilling in the forest. In the last uh, encounter, you all had run upon a scared, frightened little twig blight standing right next to a big old tree blight. But uh, you avoided certain doom and uh, retreated a little bit and started regrouping and formulating some plans. And that is where we pick up. So. We're chilling, eating sandwiches. Yeah, you guys moved a couple hundred feet back down the road, right? If I recall correctly. Yep. Yes. And um, as you were resting, Durant was playing around with the special looking glass that uh, Shem had provided you with. And you kind of feel like you've come across some interesting discoveries about its abilities, um, among which include the ability to see, uh, you know, through magnification, um, like a normal looking glass, but you also got some other, you know, kind of picked up some other kind of benefits from this. And you recognize that the abilities related to true scene were imbued through this looking glass once you were able to attune to it. And so that's where we pick up. What do you guys want to do? Okay. Uh, well, Durant hasn't told anybody yet, I don't think. So uh, Durant's going to say out loud, Oh, hello there. And he's making gestures behind his back to like tell everybody to like fan out. Uh, okay. You guys see Durant strangely stop looking through the glass and kind of speak. And he's like spreading his fingers like this, like. Three questions. <laughs> One, are you our worst nightmare? Two, are you open to trading for safe passage? Three, have you heard of Alyssa Hanaduthis? <laughs> Guys, who is he talking to? Oh, no. I do not know. I think that spy glass has made him go crazy. The green lady goes behind a tree. Hey, Durant, do you remember you saw off the other direction from the green lady? There was like some magical mushrooms or something. Did you eat some of those? Uh, no, um, but there was like a, a green lady over that way. She just went behind a tree. Yeah, you told us before. Did I? Why don't we, do you guys think those 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 mushrooms would be useful? Should we go get, get some? And then like go talk to the green lady and see if she knows about that tree blight. Maybe she could help us. Um, two people, Astroff and Acker, both make perception checks. Oh, crap. I should, uh, my dice, it's my first time playing D&D, sorry. <laughs> okay. 17. Okay. Hmm, 17. Holy moly, 23? You hear a twig snap, not in the direction of where Durant is, but about 10 feet into the thick wood behind you guys on the other side of the road. Well, that's not good. I'd like to turn around and uh, see what I can see. You see the face of a green lady peeking behind a, from out from behind a tree and she's staring directly at you. Is it fair to assume that due to, you know, the dry uh, druid, nature that I would recognize this thing? You feel like there's a strong chance this could be a dryad. Okay. I would... Oh, wait. Do, do dryads speak common? And she's staring directly at you. Okay. Well, I am a, a giant cat person, I suppose. Um, I'm trying to... Oh, I speak... Uh, what is... is is Sylvan? Sylvan. Is that the, the Fey yep. language? Yep. Okay, then I'll, I want to give it a shot and say, you know, hel you know, hello, Lady of the Forest. She kind of like 
looks surprised. Like she kind of tilts her head almost curiously. And, and she looks at you as though she's surprised. And she says in Sylvan to you, she's like, hello, cat man. <laughs> is there, is there, are you, are you familiar? Is this, are these your forests? Yes. Are, do, are you are you aware of the creatures that that will not will not let us pass? Yes, the blights. They are not mine. Would you do you have any problem with letting us pass? No. Could you tell us more about these blights and how they came to be? You should not go further. It's very dangerous. And so I, I go I, oh sorry. Can I touch you? Sure, and I, re- I, I I like I put my tail out there so you guys like, can... all see the green lady kind of like carefully step out from behind the tree, and she just moves through the underbrush and like plants kind of just move out of her way. And wait, I tap Riff and Durant because they haven't looked this way yet. Yeah, they, well, <laughs> yeah, right. At this, at this point, they have because they oh. when you guys hear. If anybody else speaks Sylvan, you understand. But otherwise, you hear Acker like speaking, and you you turn to see. And as long as nobody's pulling weapons, she gently kind of walks forward, and she comes up to Acker, and she like feels his face and his fur and like his arms, any like exposed, non armored area. And she's like, "Interesting." I'm gonna sleep with this dryad. <laughs> she's like I have not seen a cat man so did, uh, Ast- does Astrof do you speak Sylvan? I, w- I do not I'm just kind of staring at okay. y'all like she just comes over and starts petting you okay, Riff, is, so- Riff is following the conversation Riff speaks Sylvan okay and so I would I kind of like quickly to to Durant and Estroff saying, you know, she, she, you know, she's not here. She's not protecting. She says the, it's, it's just the blights that are protected. I'm going to try to learn about some more information. Right. Does and she so, speak any other languages? I I'll ask her. That's a good question. Um, uh, you know, um, hey, what I turn to her and say, you know, what, what can I, what should I call you? Do you have a name? Yes. Sirisa. Sirisa, do you speak the common language? Mm, the language of men? And she yes. points to Durant. She yes. says, no. And then she, you see she immediately looks, oddly, <clears throat> she looks at Riff, and she's in Elvish, she says, I speak your language. All right, I can understand her now. Yeah, okay. Durant also speaks <laughs> Elvish, so... Oh, crap, I don't speak Elvish. This is... <laughs> oh, I do. I totally speak Elvish. Ha-ha! Okay. Oh, and so I go back and I, I say... Oh, wait, hold on. So she spoke in Elvish, and, yeah. the, and the rest of the party heard, and so everybody speaks Elvish. So she looks at everyone kind of individually, and she says, it is curious that you travel with this company. Why, why is it curious? And she, she like looks over her shoulder and she does look like these little sounds like and like four squirrels just jump down from the trees and kind of come around her and they just like skitter up and climb around her and like go up on her shoulder. I want to talk to some of them and try to get them to climb on me to like okay. like druid flex. Yeah. <laughs> totally do. And a couple of them like the squirrels seem surprised and they come over by you. And she smiles and she says, what forest are you from? And she points to Estroff. Trying to remember what forest that was. She's like, are you a southern forest gnome? That would be southern, right? From where we're at? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I am from the southern forest. Do you only live here? Yes. We do not go into the flooded forest. It is defiled. This is the farthest we can go. So there's no other way through. 
you can go through this forest. If you wish to avoid the tree blight, you must go around the road. He cannot see you if you are far enough away. Are there other things? How far? <laughs> oh, 100 feet should be sufficient. But do not go east of the road. There are dangerous molds and spores that would turn you into the walking dead people. Thank you. That is very nice to know. <laughs> so are there other walking dead people in these parts we should be aware of? Yes. Sometimes foolish men who wish to harm the trees of this forest, they wander too far and they inhale the spores and they become sick and they turn into corpses that walk. How can we avoid them? Do not go east. If you wish to go north, you must go west of the tree blight, where I was before. Can I, can you... I roll insight on that? Not that I, yes. I debate whether or not I, I would even bother, because she's probably pretty trustworthy. Uh, five. Did Durant tell us about the, the uh, mold oh, no. and the fungus and everything he saw? Yeah, he told us last time. Okay. I was going to go get, Durant, I wanted to go get uh, some, but now I don't. Yeah. Durant, <laughs> you mind asking her about the well, mushrooms sorry. you saw? Oh, hold, hold on. So I, I rolled, actually, it was, an, it was a bonus. It's an eight for insight. She seems to be telling the truth. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess Durant will go ahead and ask her, are the mushrooms that we've seen to the east, are they uh, are they able to be farmed easily? No. If we were to say, take some with us, could we use them in any way? They are poison. Why would you do that? Poison to the touch, just to touch them with our fingers. If you try to pick them, their spores will come out. Oh. And then we turn into the undead. Thank you for the warning. And the yellow mold is also dangerous. Sarisa, would you be willing to lead us in a safe way where we're going? We're trying to rid the forest of, you know, of the danger. This forest is not really dangerous. It's the flooded forest to the north that is very dangerous. That's the forest we are we are trying to to clean up. But how? There are only four of you. Well, you know, it, big things come from small numbers sometimes. So we we have many adventures under our belt, and um, we uh, we feel very confident that we may that we may know what the the cause of or that the source of the of the problem here, and we are going to investigate to see if this is something that we can stop. Ah, the source. She says, "You, you mean the mage who never dies?" Yeah, we we learned that there is a mage tower here. We we've come we, to we investigate. Could. It was that never house. dies? Yes, the mage who never dies is the one who created the tower and who claimed the flooded forest as his domain. Is that like an honorary title? <laughs> <laughs> I do not know his true name. I do not know if anyone does. What else but do you does know? he die? <laughs> he, he came centuries ago. No one knows from where. Have you ever seen him? No. Do you know, have you heard of any, any information that would be useful for us trying to learn more about it? I know where the tower is, if that's where you wish to go, but would I would you... not go into the flooded forest. There are far too many evil creatures and things that, that dwell there. Would you lead us within sight of the tower? We don't really want to go to the tower. We just want to be able to, to look at it. Yes. Uh, Let's do Sarissa, that. Another, another question. What 
powers do you have over the domain of your forest? Mm, how? <laughs> oh, I know. What powers? Like, let's say somebody that we didn't want to come through this area were to try and come through this area. Could you maybe confuse them or send them down the road? Oh, yes. Path? I could do that very easily. Do you have a means to hurt those individuals if it becomes necessary? Well, yes. I could entangle the path if that's what you're speaking of. And then I want to turn to Durant and say, Durant, she is, she is a, 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 noble, a, a noble creature of the forest. She would, we would never presume to ask her to hurt anything. Wink. <laughs> is it that you seek to not have more men from the town come here? There's one specific man that we probably don't want to come here. Is it a hunter or a lumberjack who cuts down the trees? No, Riff, you can change your shape, correct? It's a very tall man who speaks kind of like this, but not exactly. Tall, lanky. Hmm. Oh, I know this one. Probably wears robes. Dang it. How, how do you know this one? Because he's tricksy. My friends have seen him. When? Long ago, perhaps 10 years it was. He, he has no hair and he is an old man with wrinkles. I honestly don't remember if he has no hair. He is bald. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, that is the person we speak of. He is a wizard who seeks the power of the tower, does he, does he not? We seek to prevent him from getting the power of the tower, ultimately. But we're playing at being his allies for the time being. He did not see me. Good. Let's keep it that way. And she so let's not let him through. speaks to a couple of the sparrows. And Astroff, you understand what she's saying. She's basically telling them to like go check out the area and do like surveillance. And they fly off. <clears throat> like six like a half dozen sparrows fly off. I wonder if I can like yeah, let's speak have... with small beasts, but to her and say thank you. She seems to acknowledge. You could tell a squirrel to tell her thank you. Hey Durant, is your um is your fancy gnomish optical device still working? Can you look back the way we came to see if anyone is following us, maybe invisibly? Sure. Still Durant. activated. And Durant does. See anything? You look down the road, there's nothing. You look out. Basically you do a 360. You don't see anything different from what you saw before. I'm just wondering, guys. Um, first of all, I don't remember exactly what Shim said in terms of how close he wanted us to get to the tower, but I'm wanted a little... to check it out. I'm wondering if he was trying to double cross us and that he wanted us to run into the tree guardian. She says, I, I can take you to the forest's edge. There is a great open space between the forest's edge and the tower. Well, we're burning daylight. Let's do this. Yeah, that sounds good. We appreciate the help. Um, is there anything we can do for you in return? She seems to be like thinking. She's like, I cannot think of anything that you have. Okay. Well, then we appreciate the assistance. Please lead the way. She nods. She just starts walking into this tangled, twisted mess. And it, like, bushes and underbrush and, like, 
vines just kind of move out of the way as she's walking. And then she turns around like expectantly and she's like, are you coming? Durant follows. Yep. Okay. Yeah. If comes. As long as you all stay basically within 20 or 30 feet, as she moves through the forest, the forest moves out of the way. So it becomes normal terrain as you guys are walking, but you notice that behind you, it all closes in. Nice. Um, and, and she continues walking west for like a good 200 feet. And then she turns north. And as she's walking north, she's like just like whistling a song. Um, and she turns to you and she says, we are far enough away from the tree. You will not hear us. But if you walk too close, he feels your movement in the ground. He can move and he can move fast. I have seen him crush lumberjacks who were foolish enough to try and bring a cart with horses up the road. Good to know. I guess it's good we left our horses back there. Right. She's, she continues walking. You guys <clears throat> walk for another couple miles. And um, you eventually come to a point where that thick, thick canopy that's kind of smothering the light seems to open up a little. There's a little more space in between the big trees. And then she kind of leads you to this edge of the forest. And you could see the sunlight. And she kind of goes up behind a tree about 10 feet back from the forest edge. And she kind of peeks around. And she says, there, and she points, there is the tower. Do not go into the open ground. Why? The tower is guarded. If you get too close, you, you could probably go into the field, but you don't want to get too close. Otherwise he will try to smash you. And she points and you guys, so like, as you guys can see through this, basically imagine like you're coming out of a forest and you see this huge open field of just like grass. Um, and in the distance, you see a tower. And it's about 70 feet tall. I mean, it's a big tower, big stone tower. And you see out in front of the tower where the path would lead you to, like if you guys had stayed on the path and gone up, you see a statue, like a big stone, like man with a sword, like a statue. And she, is, points and she says, you, if you were on the path and you got close, he would come to life and try to smash you. Is the path worn? No, it's like very overgrown. Um, it's Durant almost, is... almost hard to spot amongst the grass in the field. Uh, Durant is going to look at the statue and do a knowledge history check to see if anything is recognizable from a historically significant sense. Of that In what way are you looking at the statue? Because it's still about 100 yards away. Uh, through the looking glass. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, in that case, um, you see that the statue is, in fact, not a statue. It is a construct of magical type that looks to be made of stone. Okay. Stone golem or something? More than likely. Great. Um, while you're looking, though, you notice something odd. Hmm. From your vantage point, you don't see a door. You don't see an entrance to the tower. No. Um, at the top of the tower, however, I mean the very top, what looks like the top floor, there are arched uh, windows with like stained glass. And then there's like crenellations at the top of the tower where you see a ring of like stone um, statues. I'm literally Googling crenellations. <laughs> Durant, do you so, see anything on the tower? Yeah, uh, a glass? few things. There's, there's no door. Uh, um, with your looking glass, you also realize that the 
stone statues that ring the top of the tower are also magical. Uh, and it's ringed with magical statues on, on top. But it's different from the... Uh, it's different from the statue on the main level. It, it most certainly is trapped in some way to approach from the top. Now, you I mean, cannot I... see the other side of the tower from where you're at. So there may be uh, doors or something on the other side. Could I get, like, a, we could use a hawk or a, a bird to fly over and see if they see anything on the other side? Sarissa, uh, is, was that her name? Mm -hmm. Sarissa, is, is it possible to uh, see the other side of the tower? Is it possible to walk around without much danger? Well, she says, if you walk through the field but not towards the tower and you go around towards the side that faces the flooded forest, I suppose you could see it without awakening the guardian. But remember, the flooded forest is dangerous. There are many, many bad creatures that live there. Let's just get a, let's just get a bird. Or Durant, you could use your, your hawk to, to fly. And do a look see. Probably the lowest cost because even if it dies, I can bring it back. There you go. What? Sure, it's something <laughs> How unnatural. dare you? <laughs> As a uh, living so, creature. So now, so now Durant is going to summon his hawk to appear on his shoulder. Still, no name. <laughs> no name the hawk. Uh, Nameless. Mm hmm. And he's going to ask the hawk to like make a slow circle around the tower, uh, but to keep to like the edge edge of the the field. Okay. Are you gonna like see through the hawk as you do this? I'm, I'm okay. asking not because I want to write things on your face again, <laughs> but for a completely yes, different reason. That's, uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So you your instructions to the hawk are crucial, and the hawk obeys you. Um, and does a wide sweep. It flies around the tower, um, let's say twice, and the ring of windows on the top goes all the way around, but there are no doors or windows anywhere else. If you strap the looking glass to the eye of the hawk and then see through the hawk, as it flies around. The, pro the problem would be that the hawk would have to be tuned to the looking glass. Oh, man. So we get to spend an hour. <laughs> right? I'm willing to make that sacrifice. I think we've done what Shim asked us, guys. He didn't I say mean, to go in there. He just wanted us to come look at it and see what, see what we can see. We've done that. Uh, I feel like there's um, more to this. Hawk, make a perception check for your hawk. Just out of curiosity, tell me what you get. Uh, hang on, I need to look at the hawk. Same yes. twig blight has it. The hawk might pick up <laughs> something else in terms of. I believe a hawk has it has advantage on perception. Is that correct? It should. Yeah. Oh, that's much better. Uh, I'll take the uh, the nineteen plus three twenty two. Okay. So when Hawk's doing its tour of the tower, it also happened to notice that there's something, some creature living in the swampy ground of the flooded forest. Where is the flooded forest in relation to the, to the tower? Right, all the way around it. Basically imagine like the nice forest that leads to the tower and then north of that for miles is the flooded forest. <laughs> and it's basically like, just a swamp forest. Like dirty Isengard. I kind oh, of think it as like a polluted Everglades. That's true. I mean, so basically the Everglades. And the hawk spotted something like moving slowly in that swampy area. Uh, did it get a sense of, does Durant have a sense of what that is through the hawks? Well, no, because it's literally under the bog water. Okay. So you just saw. there's something moving. Yeah. But Wasn't there a, something that you could see that 
wasn't there a spell or something that was with that looking glass that you could see hidden doors? Yes. Yes. And so I, th I think we should try to. I think if, if we go back able now. To see it though, then that might be, mean it's behind something enchanted, like the giant statue. That's fair. I think that if we were to go back now, I feel like we haven't accomplished anything other than, yep, we saw it and we learned that there's a, a twig blight and, and that's cool. But I, I figure if, uh, if we're going to be bold adventurers well, that we are, we should go maybe a little farther and see if we can. And we kind of have to decide now, are we I, going to double cross I him disagree. or are we on his side? Because now is the time to double cross him. We are, why is it now the time? Because either we have to take on this undying mage and him <laughs> or... One at a time. Well, I think either way, the the inside the tower they have it has the thing that Shem wants, and we want to get it before he does. Yeah, we're so gonna no need him. We're gonna need him to get inside the tower, though. If oh, there's all these if there's all these constructs, I'm telling you. So one one knows what else? Just to clarify, because Nathan's um, query was actually pretty valid, you would have seen from where you guys are with the looking grass glass. You, you would have seen any secret doors. You do not see any secret doors. Now, the hawk doesn't have that ability on the other side that faces the flooded forest. Oh. But if you guys wanted to try to do what the hawk did, on but on land, and go deep perimeter around with the looking glass, you could try that. There's got to be an... Look, we didn't see any... If we didn't see any hidden door on the outside, then maybe... It's a tunnel entrance. Not that I know, know how to figure out where the hell the entrance is. But... Well, we'll be under the bog, probably. Right. I'll also point out for details, like you don't see any exterior buildings or like wells or anything else like that around this field. We've got a lot of good data here, guys. I think we should go report to Shim. <laughs> I wonder what we should do. <laughs> yes, I think that's fair. I mean, that's he said, go look at the tower and report back on what we've seen. Now, was, we was that all that was all that was that literally the entirety of the ask, or was it to go and yeah, pretty I mean, much? It, he and by the to... way, by the way, Drant, I can't help but notice that you've gotten pretty chummy with Shim um, lately. So maybe you would you would know better what he's looking for. And what's up with that anyway? Like, have you guys gotten close or what? <clears throat> It's more keeping your enemies close. Okay. Okay. So there's a, yeah. there's method to your madness. If that's what the group wants, then then I'm I'm, I'm, I'm supportive. Or we could message you, him, and then the two druids could turn into horses. We could ride uh, to the back while he's on his way. Right. <laughs> Do you guys think that he wanted us to get killed by the tree guardian? Because he's been up here himself. No, nope. right? I think he knows that we're good natured, and we would have made it this far, and he couldn't. I mean, on the one hand, I think he's no, no, he killed. has right. Didn't they? But, didn't they say they saw? They saw, they saw him? him in the in the regular force. They didn't uh, say they saw him this one. Uh, Sarissa says she didn't see him, but her animal friends did. On okay. the one, on the one hand, I think he wanted to get us killed, but on the other hand, he probably wouldn't have give us, given us that fancy Namish optical device. Good point. Well, that thing it's, it's hard to figure him out. That in the store, right? But yeah, I, I mean, all I know is that he wanted us to get some intel on the tower. Um, no hidden doors. I mean, we've used that that spyglass, and um, we've seen the constructs. We know there's something else here. I mean, if you guys are feeling up, I, you know, I feel like we're missing something. That if we turn back now, <laughs> he like, wanted we, he wanted uh, like a scout around. We've only scouted the front half. No, yeah. the hawk went around, but the hawk didn't go around with magic. Uh, hey, two two seconds, true. guys. Yeah. True. I need yep. to take care of something here. No problem. Durant is busy in a buck. So and... you guys are kind of on the forest edge. You have seen no movement from anything around the tower. I say we, like, my Acker's preference. Okay, let's, oh, I should RP this. Hey, guys, I don't want to, I prefer not to leave just now. I feel like we're really close. Let's, let's see if we can sneak our way around, or, you know, and, and uh, take take a look through the, that looking glass on the other side, just to rule out everything, and and then we I promise we can go back. What do you what do you think? I'm all for continuing. 
All right. We'll do it your way. Okay. So like it's uh, a bummer. I really would want Durant to, to resist. <laughs> I don't know. What would? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, if uh, I want him to weigh what, in, what, you do, what would Durant do? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um. Summon your inner Durant, Bill. So. <clears throat> The question becomes who is doing the sneaking around because whoever is going to do it is going to make stealth. It has to be Durant because. because <laughs> Wait, he's, he's in plate, right? Well, yeah, well, yeah, that's true, but he can, he's attuned. So none of us can do it. But seeing the doors, you didn't have to be attuned. You had to be attuned for like true sight and things like that. No, I thought that, I thought that the true sight gave him the ability to see yeah. the door, the hidden doors. Hey, um, Hey, Acker. Do you hey, still have Do you still have your your fancy pass without a trace ability? I think I might be able to, to conjure something up on on a whim if needed. I feel a lot safer. Yeah. I agree. Hidden, hidden. There's okay. something out there. That would, come, that would certainly help uh, Durant's roll. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Or maybe he could just take off his freaking plate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One, one coming up. <laughs> Cast it. That is the motion I would naturally make in order to cast a spell. Okay. Yeah, right. so Swish and flick. We're all dead, Durant. We got a whole, you know, total party kill here. So <laughs> shouldn't nice, be alone. TPK. Yeah. Um, so the idea is that Acker would do pass without trace, and you guys would all stealth around the perimeter so that you can get a good sight line from the flooded forest side of the back end of the tower. Um, I'm going to suggest an alternative plan. Let's hear it. Uh, what if I take the time to cast Tensor's Floating Disc as a ritual spell, and you guys can float on it so only one of us is actually making contact with the ground? You can still go with Pass Without Trace, but just in case like we set off Tremor Sense or something like that with something around... Mm. Will that make us more visible? A big floating thing as opposed to <laughs> sneaking? Well, he could keep us in the pass without trace, just like six inches off the ground. Okay, I'll bite. Well, I mean, the, this pass without uh, trace would be centered around Acker anyway. So. Yeah, I've been dying to get Durant to carry us around on his floating disc since I, he got I, the, it. The so. only thing is, I can't be on the floating disc. So. I, know, I know, that's the, the best part. <laughs> right? And you have full plate on, don't you? Uh, I, I only have, um, uh, what is it? I, I have the medium armor on the uh, half plate. Breastplate or half plate? Bre breastplate, breastplate. Okay. Sarissa, Sarissa, what are the odds we all come back alive if we go out here? You've been listening to our plan. What do you think? The goners. I would go along the forest edge and then through the tall grass but not go near the statue sounds reasonable to me tall grass i won't even be seen <laughs> thank you <laughs> if we're gonna do this i say we take sarissa's advice guys i would agree yeah let's let's go with that it was a good ask yeah okay so are we gonna get floated by durant Eh, why not? Let's do it. Okay, nice. I've, I passed without trace, everybody. Well, wait until the tensor's disc is up because. Uh... Oh. So you guys take some time. Durant does the tensor's disc. You get on it, and then you do pass without trace. So, what you have to do now is Durant has to make his stealth check with the pass without a trace bonus. And. Uh, is it a disadvantage for? Uh... Can I can I do guidance on him first? You the sure? Breastplate. Guidance. You've been guidanced. Okay. <laughs> I rolled a forty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to find. The... Oh, do I still have an inspiration from last session too, or did that expire? No, it, you you still have it. Nice. I don't know that it causes disadvantage. Let me just. I, I 
think it would with like full or half plate. I'm not sure about a breastplate. Yeah, I don't think the breastplate does. Let's see if I can flip. Wait, the breastplate's metal, or is it like studded leather or something? No, it's metal. It's metal. All right. But you know, the some of the medium and heavy armor is um, causes disadvantage with self check, but I don't know if the breastplate does. Let me see if I can flip over to that. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to burn my uh, inspiration. inspiration. Inspiration, anyway. Yeah, the breastplate does not cause disadvantage. So. Okay, and then I'm going to use the guidance. So that's 16 before the bonus, 26. Okay. You move through the grasslands like a veritable ninja. Like a cat person. You guys are just floating along behind Durant as he kind of moves through as carefully as possible, keeping an eye you do not see the statue move. You go as far away as you can. And as you get closer to the other side, you feel that there's the ground is damp. Not quite swamp where you're like plopping through, but just, you know, like when ground's been saturated with rainwater, how it kind of gets mushy. A little bit of that going on. Um, you make your way carefully through and you get to a point where now the you've you've gotten to the other side of the mage tower and you from this position can smell the difference um the the flooded forest smells like a swamp um and it it like the trees that grow there just seem to be like malformed a lot of them have like roots that are exposed um you see like these pools of water and then there's like boggy kind of peat moss sort of dry patches and then more pools of water. And this extends for as far as you could see for miles. Um, you turn around and you use your magical looking glass and you examine the back end of the tower that you couldn't see before. You do not see any secret doors. You don't see any visible doors at all on the main level. You don't see any other windows other than the ones that are at the very top floor, which look slightly the same as what you saw on the other side. They're, they're kind of like arched windows with stained glass. Just like a... for the sake of argument, uh, I'm going to try looking toward my feet with the looking glass. OK. You don't see anything. You see feet. Amazing. So I don't see anything like underground as I'm panning. No, um, and you you can search the whole ground. You don't see anything in particular. Um, make a just go ahead and make a perception check while you're doing that though. Oh no. Okay. You notice your toes. Uh, that'd be an eighteen. You do see something while you're kind of like panning around as you, as you're kind of like looking around, uh, a, about 120 feet away, you see something moving, not towards you, but just kind of like moving underneath like a, a patch of like bog. And it is magical. Something's moving and it's magical. <clears throat> It kind of looks like it might be large, and it kind of looks like it might be what the hawk saw. Uh, guys, something big and magical is that way. Well, the bog. I know which way I'm not going to go. Right. Have you, had, have you guys had a good look? What do you think? I think I, I think I want to send a bird up to look what's in that window. Durant. You hear a voice in your head, and it says, come to me. I can help you. Who are you? 
there's no response. You hear it again. Come to me. Come to the water. I can help you. GTFO. <clears throat> uh, something's asking us to come to the water and saying it can help us. Just, just you or the rest of us, too? Uh, <clears throat> unclear, but I figure we're all for one at this point. Uh, uh, Acker, you, you hear a voice in your head that says, come to the water. I can help you. Uh, cats hate water. Hard pass. Uh, is it possible to insight check this voice? No, because it's telepathic. Okay. Um, <clears throat> everybody within two rounds also gets a similar telepathic message. Guys, I don't like I don't like the the sound of this. Generally, bad things happen when when voices in your head tell you to come to the water in a swamp. Right. Oh. So yeah, I Ma generally don't listen to my voices. So. Mage's Tower, beautiful place, but location's not that great. I'm yeah. ready to go tell Shem about this. Let's get out. Agreed. Yeah. Let's get out. Place again, say, come to the pale tree. I can help you. And you see out, you're about like 100 feet away, there's like this, basically it looks like a dead tree that's kind of petrified and the bark's all gone and it's just kind of like sun bleached. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Durant looks at that with the looking glass. It's a dead tree, but you see the thing is close to it. It's in like a pool close to that tree. Riff, um, does Riff recognize the voice that he hears in his head? No. Okay. Shucks. Well, guys, I'm okay with heading back. Yep. But they said they'll help us. Oh, well, once you put it that way, sure, why not? <laughs> because nothing evil ever says it will help you. <laughs> right? He sounds yeah. like a trustworthy fella. <laughs> I think I think we've got some good data on this place for Shem. Hopefully, uh -huh. it's, what he's want Hopefully it's what he wants. Let's go. Durant, suddenly okay, you see an image in your mind. Not words, but an image in your mind. And it basically looks like, like a video <clears throat> almost from the perspective of the swamp looking up at the tower and you see a man fly up to the window and go inside the window. And it says, come to me. I can help you. <laughs> None of us saw that. So. In turn, each one of you sees this image. Ah, so that's how they get in. I could go up the wall. Uh, you know what Durant's going to do? Durant is still skeptical here. He's going to send his hawk to the to the base of the tree. Okay. Poor hawk. Rip. <laughs> um, the hawk lands by the base of the tree. It is very scared because it's like 10 feet away from whatever the large blob is underneath the water. Is it just a blob? Does the hawk see it better from this vantage point? Yes, but it doesn't know how to describe it. It says it's some kind of monster. Uh, Durant wow. is going to look through its eyes. Okay. Make an arcana check. Oh, goody. How well is this going to go with my mess <laughs> here? It's a helpful chorus gnome. <laughs> uh, that's an 18. Uh, hmm. Yeah, you figure out what it is. Um, <laughs> I'm going to share my screen with you so that you could see the roll that I just made. Thanks, Google Dice Roller. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks. Um, so uh, what you what you what happens is you look through your hawk's eyes and you're studying the form and you see these tentacles starting to move and you're like, oh crap, that's an odiaf. And just as you're realizing what it is, the tentacles fly out towards your hawk, your hawk 
is startled and flies away and the, the tentacles swoop around it but miss. All right, guys, now's a really good time to leave. Okay, let's go. We're on, we're on your floating disc. Start moving. Okay, uh, make your return stealth check. Oh, goody, with no with no <laughs> advantage here. We still got past that trace. Uh, that's an eighteen. Oh, you're so lucky. All right, oh, hang on, that's actually more that. than that. Uh, it's a twenty. Okay, you 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 get back to the forest edge. Teresa is there. She's like looking at you curiously. She's like, did you see anything? <laughs> did we? Yeah. There's a creature there. Yes. There are many terrible things that live in the flooded forest. They were brought here. They were attracted to the tower. Why is this half of the forest not affected by the tower? Who knows? I'm going to insight check that. 21. She knows. I don't think you're being fully truthful with us. She's like, well... The mage who never dies did not come this way. Who's that with you? Sounds like you never get around to it. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. It was busy. <laughs> did he not come this way because you were here? No. She's like, he. I'm sure that he could destroy me. It, it's from long ago. You know the mountains. You know the mountains, right? They were not always called the Troll Hills. What were they called? The Earth Spur Mountains are the largest range of mountains in this region. And the King of the Mountain made sure that the mage never came south of the flooded forest. That was their agreement. But the king sleeps. But he's alive. So I the king know. doesn't die like, either? I don't go to the mountains. She's like, but no one's heard or seen of the king in eons. He sleeps. Some say that he dreams. He dreams of what will be. Do his dreams bring hope or fear? His dreams are just what will be. Sometimes they are dreams of hope. Sometimes they are dreams of fear. The king did not meddle in the affairs of men, but the king forbade the mage who never dies from coming any further south on the flooded forest. The mage was powerful, as you can see, but not as powerful as the king. How do you wake up the king? Climb the mountain and wake him up? Does the king have a name? Mm, yes, but I don't know how to say it in his language. Do you speak giant? No. I don't. That's why we call him the king who sleeps. I don't know. Giants to me don't seem like the sort that are keen to be woken up. No. And if they have an agreement and the mage hasn't got, you know, it, you know, crossed that line and broke the contract, then probably kind of upset if we wake him up. There are stories. There are stories of the elves of Sendrin going to ask the king for help. They what were, happened? They were respectful. 
And the king told them what they needed to know. How far, how far of a journey is it to see the king from here? She's like walking times. Yeah. I've never gone that far. Oh, <laughs> I want to turn to Durant and say, well, what was that thing that, that, that was calling us? Uh, what was the name again, Bill? I didn't quite catch it. OTF. OTF. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Eric. So, so Durant, what what exactly is that? Uh, hang on. I have to pull out my monster Oh, I can't just turn to my bookshelf anymore. Yeah. It's a forest. It's a big garbage <laughs> monster. Here, I'll show you a picture. Uh, I know it has a whole bunch of nasty abilities. But it wanted to help us. Uh huh. <laughs> it would have totally helped you. <laughs> it would have helped, helped us with all of its tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> it would have thrown our dead bodies through the window. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. This, this might actually be the time that we, that we need to use. Uh, <gasps> I could feign death. Up. I could use feign death. Yeah. Here's, your, here's your ODF. Oh, yeah, oh, that would have been bad news bears. Yeah, hard Rock pass. Separation. Okay. Maybe yeah. a little animal handling. Good call. Why haven't we been listening to Riff more often? <laughs> um, speaking of Riff, as she leads you guys back down and clear um, back around to the road where your horses are, um, along the way, she says, I thought of, of the idea to what you asked. Oh, oh, to riff, sorry. For how you can repay me. Oh, that was my ask. Yes. She says, you will sing songs. And she points to riff. How do you know that I sing or sing well for that matter? Probably like three my instruments lady. sticking out of his back. My lady. <laughs> right. He's got like 14 yeah. lutes he's on him. <laughs> I can tell by the way that, that you speak our tongue. Hmm. Be back by nine fifteen. So, when you guys get back to the horses, you notice like everything is fine. There's no, you know, carnage left over. And she sits down, kind of in the crook of a low hanging tree branch. Kind of climbs up and just sits there. Would you like to hear anything in particular? Maybe uh, I like a nice sad songs. Sorry, sad songs. Hero. Doing a nice uh, dirge from my pan flute, maybe? Yes. Okay. I can do that. <clears throat> Riff gets out of his pan flutes, just like warming it up a little bit. Uh, I know that's not what a pan flute sounds like, but... <laughs> <laughs> you had me convinced. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he starts playing... Um, Something he learned at uh, when he when he started going to Bard College and hanging out with some of the Fey folk. Heard one of, one of the songs from there that was kind of sad and yeah, give that a try. Okay. Roll your performance. Roll the performance. Now, now do I have to be proficient to aid? Yes. Twenty four. Twenty-four is very good. What? As, nice. As you, guys, as you guys sit around in this kind of circle, um, and Riff begins playing this music, the sun is setting, and you notice the sun coming through the canopy of the of the forest almost takes on a strange kind of reddish purple hue, and you see that as she's listening to the music and Riff continues to play kind of like falls into this like trance almost and like kind of seems to like sway and move back and forth and then she kind of gently just melts off of this branch and kind of lands on the ground and begins dancing and she carries on dancing the entire time that Riff is 
playing the music. And as she dances, you notice that there's like a glow around her. And all of you guys notice that the forest behind her, as you're looking at it, begins to kind of ripple. Almost like you're looking at it through water. And as Riff wraps up his his tune, she kind of spins and dances and she stops and she smiles at all of you and then she kind of like falls backwards into this ripple and she disappears. And for ever a brief moment when she disappears through the ripple, you saw like the ripple, almost like when you're looking at the reflection of something on still water, how it's like a mirror. You notice that that mirror changes and you see something through it. Like something that's not the forest. You see like a, a, a just a, a glimpse of like an open prairie beyond with a scattering of trees and mountains in the distance. And then she disappears through this ripple and the ripple seals and you see the forest as it was. Well, she either really liked my song or she really didn't like it and she jumped to some other plane. I'm not sure. Um, those of you with nature may make a roll. Oh, God. And actually, Riff, you can make the roll too because you're a bard. A five. Oh, seven. Um, Eleven. So, so Astroff, you've never seen anything like this. Riff, what'd you get? Eleven. You've never seen anything like this either, but you've heard about this. You you are fairly certain that she just went into the Feywild. I guess she go ahead. I don't know. Becker. I was gonna say like a uh, meta here. I mean, would it make wouldn't a, a druid na naturally know what that was? Yeah, I mean you like you guys all kind of have your suspicions. Okay. I mean it's not she didn't try to hide it. She didn't disappear into a tree. Like, she did it in front of you. Did you guys see that? That was insane. Now, there is significance to that, but no one made their role high enough to have the full <laughs> context for that. So, I want to tell you, but you guys are so terrible. That... <laughs> I mean, there was something so familiar about that, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it exactly. No, it, was, it was quite a sight. It was a oh, great performance riff. No, oh, thank you. I mean, it did, it did remind me of the Feywild a bit. Um, it's been a while. Make a... Let me think. Make an Arcana check. Who? Riff? Uh, anyone with Arcana. 16. <laughs> I definitely don't have Arcana. <laughs> I do not either. That's a natty one for a 10. Oh, God. 16. You begin to wonder if indeed she was a dryad. Hmm. Um, Durant, my my bookwormish friend, do you know much about uh, about dryads in terms of what they're able to do? Do they have the ability to to sort of create um, a ripple in space like that and go through? One moment. Channel divinity uh, Ooh. to gain, gain proficiency in nature. Okay. So <coughs> this role will be at a plus. And let me let me inspire you. I'll play play some more of that song. Plus six a, bardic inspiration. Yeah. Can I do? Uh, I mean, not plus six. D six. Sorry. I'll do a guidance as well. Okay. Actually, sorry, it's That's D8. Like, it's D8 yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, as Joff pats him on the back. <laughs> so I just got to play the, the refrain of that same tune to inspire Durant. Okay. Add a D8 yeah. to your whatever you're doing. And I got to give you a D4. D8. Yep. Okay. And, yeah, you have a D4 from the guidance. Make yeah, it great. I have to get the, have to get the D8 as well. He rolls natural ones on all of these. Watch. <laughs> All right, and I'm rolling at a plus big six. Money, to big money, All this is. Big money. Oh my god, guys! What is it? The dumbest thing ever. Wow. Oh my god. 
All right. So <laughs> uh, oh, wait, wait. It gets better. It gets better. Uh, so never mind. Uh, it doesn't get as good as I thought. I thought I rolled an eight on the D8, but it was a D6. Or it was a six and a two. So it's a lot. Plus, so 20 plus mm -hmm. eight, 28. I'm so proud of you, Durant. I know that, buddy. Uh, it was Estros pat on the back. I did it. That's 34. 34. Okay. We won the game. Oh. So, so here's what you realize. You realize that dryads can do things like pass without trace, or they have an ability called tree stride where they can go from one tree to another tree. Uh, they have spells. They can charm as, as a member of the fae but they can't just do what she did. Who can? Well, she's not a dryad, per se. Mm. My guess is a denizen of the Feywild. Would I know that? Uh, you do now. <laughs> Your gun, <laughs> Your like, 38 roll. roll or whatever bullshit you, you pulled out of you your ass right there. <laughs> You floated for a second. Right. You ascend. You're basically more druidic than either of us. So the books. Uh, Use the no, books. Bl blame blame with that, Yeah, with that ridiculously high divine level of knowledge, basically Denair imparts to you that that was most likely a Fey Aladrin, which was the most powerful of the Aladrin. I share that. Wow. That raises a whole bunch of eyebrows and questions. Would I have heard anything like that in like oh yeah. Or folklore. You've heard of the Eladrin because they're, you know, basically like elves, uh there there are a variety of different Eladrin, but basically they're they're kind of fey races or sub races that kind of include elves, and elves are considered common amongst the Eladrin. The Fey Eladrin are kind of like the noble Eladrin. Uh, significantly more powerful. That's why I could speak elf. Riff, um, Riff looks around the area we're in just to see if anything was left on the ground, or just look around. What if, what if they left us a gift or something? Uh, use your use your spyglass, Durant. Yeah, I was just gonna pull the spyglass out and look. Okay, in the crook of the branch where she was sitting, you see a sprig of an herb. Wait, like where she was sitting? I see, like, Durant. I'm gonna oh, indicate that to Riff, and I'm gonna say a gift, perhaps. She was sitting on it. I mean. A gift, perhaps. <laughs> so you're saying she's got a magic bottom, so wherever she sits, it's going <laughs> right? to Right? Smells like Fae farts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We're, right. we're reduced to laughing at fart jokes again. <laughs> you know, I'm embarrassed for myself. <laughs> All right. Riff goes and checks it out after Andrew tells him about it. Okay. Um... I mean, you can do a nature check to see if you figure out what this is. Sure. No, it's like, I'm spoon feeding this to you guys. Come on. No, I, I actually didn't expect you guys to get this far. Frankly. No one expected Durant to get a 38. So. <laughs> 10. 10. Uh, yeah, you're like, this is a plant. <laughs> Anyone hey, else want to check this out? Pick me up, Riff. There's a oh right, it's a nature check, right? So I probably yeah. can give it a there's shot. Actually, there's actually a, a chart that I'm using. Uh, God, and ten. Common, like the DC for a common one is sixteen. And this yeah, I'm not close. Common. That's so fourteen. At, yeah, you're like this. Just looks like a little weird sprig of herb. Really is it thinking. is it um well, is it funny. planted or is it like no it's laying down it looks like <sighs> can I check with medicine <laughs> it has like a, a a seed pod almost and then this like little green you know like a twig growing out of the seed pod and little green leaves 
let's collect it and bring it back with us. Yeah. So I want to make a medicine check after I've like looked at it and I'm like, it's definitely since, an herb. Since nonsense stuff seems to work for Durant right now, I'm going to make a nature <laughs> check on that. <laughs> That's a dirty 20 <laughs> on medicine. Are you see- oh, my God. Uh, don't feel like this is something that you've ever seen for medicinal use. Uh, my nature check was a but 22. Recreation. Oh, wait, no, hang on, hang on. Uh, Recreational check. <laughs> You're not going to fool us, <laughs> little twig. All right, so that's actually, we're going to get you. <laughs> that's actually a, a 25. Wait, how does that work? <laughs> I've got something wrong on my sheet here, Bill. I need, to, I need to fix it. Oh, I see. I'm off by one. Okay. Uh, oh, no, so a 24. Be, <laughs> yeah, it'd be 24. It'd be 18 plus 6. I, I have a... This looks like... It, it's, it looks like nothing that you have seen conventionally from a nature perspective. It looks like perhaps it is something that you could plant, but it looks like its origins are not of this world. Perhaps it's like a plant from the Feywild. It's either going to go really good or really bad. Let's take it. What do you guys think? Do you think? No, Acker actually wouldn't want it. it. No, no, Acker said we should leave it. It was a, it was a, it came from the Fey. It belongs I mean, to the forest. I kind of think if, if whoever that was or whatever that was wanted us, uh, they would have told us. Sarissa would have said, I'm leaving something for you. Otherwise, I feel like maybe part of, her leaving was leaving something in her place to be the next sort of dryad whatever guardian that helps people like us I don't maybe Acker should ask it this is a tough one talk to it talk to it I think I have one I have another spell slot that I could use yep this is <laughs> happening okay okay speak with plants <laughs> I can't we're so forgetful. I was not anticipating that. <laughs> for, forgetful dads. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to use it twice. s drop right. for the win. You begin to invoke the power to speak with plants. And you, you cast your spell. What do you mm-hmm. say to this? Hey, little buddy. Who, who are you? I, I've never, I don't recognize you. What, what are you? Twig. I... Fairy. Twig. Oh, are you gonna are you gonna grow it and, and grow berries? Yes. Are you what what do your berries look like? Blue. I, I tell this to it looks like it's a blueberry plant, guys. I, hey, I know the, <laughs> hey Acker, Acker, <laughs> ask it if it wants to go with us or would it rather stay here in this nice section of forest? Yeah. This is a this is a beautiful section of forest here. Um would you like to stay or would you like to come on, on adventures with us? Come with. Okay. How, how much uh, d- dirt should we bring? Uh, do you, how fast do you grow? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what do um, you ask, ask it what it needs to, to stay healthy? Yeah. What, what, What's what do you need it for? Yeah. How do we keep you healthy on, as we take you with us? Dirt, water, Okay, well, tell this. It sounds like the normal stuff. So let's. Uh, I, I go with my my bag and I, I bring a like a uh, like a cup, like my camping cup or whatever the heck I'm I gonna, have. I'm gonna make... cast druid craft on it and make it bloom. Oh, no, that'll be it'll be so much harder to make it to move it. Actually, I don't know if that would work, but if it does, you have just hacked my game. Hold on, let me see if this would actually work. <laughs> I, I hear that you might. Acker, mm-hmm. ask it if it uh, if it grows good berries. Do you grow good berries? Uh, Astroff, do you do druid craft on it? Yeah. Okay, so here's what happens while you guys are talking with the plant. Astroff casts a spell on it. Astroff, what are you doing? And it grows from this tiny little seedling into a little shrub and its roots are kind of like, eh, like it's just, <laughs> kind of for it makes that noise. And, 
and it kind of like more twig branches grow out and the leaves begin to sprout and buds come out and it pops out um this many berries. <laughs> it pops berries. out four berries. And the nice. berries were good. Um okay. those of you with good berry know that these are good berries. Well, that's not me. That's not uh, me. Yeah, I don't have good berry, but I might recognize it. Oh, rec- should we can we do another nature checks now that we yeah. have uh, some more information? Okay. I'm going to say Durant's nature checks have expired at this point. Okay, yeah, 16. I got a 19. Okay. You guys know being druids about good berry. You know that to cast that spell that you need a mistletoe sprig. This is not mistletoe. This is a plant from another area that isn't part of your world. This looks like a bush, like a small shrub that grows good berries, and it is sentient. <laughs> wow. It's a really, really good berry. Way, it's freaking out now because it doesn't have any dirt. It's like, eh, neat dirt. Put it down, uh, put it down. Uh, yeah. If, put it. You put I go it. to Estra office like, geez, man. After, <laughs> How are you going to move this thing? You put it in your um, mug of yeah, dirt. Yeah, I'm going. I mean, how big physically so is it, this thing? It like jumps into the mug of dirt and it's like, eh, crap. Oh, so it's still kind of smallish. It's, yeah, it's, it's like. Okay. Crap. I don't have to like upend my, my backpack and fill it with dirt to haul this thing out. I feel like that might be something that you'll need to do down the line. But for oh, right yeah. now, it's okay. So now we have a pet goblin and a pet good berry shrub. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to see what we were collecting here. Should we name the goblin good berry and the shrub goblin berry? Oh my God. <laughs> Some Greenland, Iceland shit. What are we doing? <laughs> Okay. Nope. This is us now. This is this is who we are. Okay. This is our oh, life. Know, my hawk should be named Goodberry. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So let's. Now that this is a thing, let's let's take Goodberry with us and and uh, and head back. Let's go back, guys. We yeah. got a lot to tell Shim. Yeah, we have. It's been a hell of a day. You, you guys trek back through the forest. It's dark. Um, I'm assuming somebody will use a light cantrip or torches. Those of you who can't see in dark vision, um, you guys make your way back to the village. You remember that there is no gate to the north, so you have to go all the way around the village to the south gate, where you are once again greeted by the same guards holding lanterns and spears, and they're like, where were you guys today? Are you sick? Were you wounded? Did anything bite you? No. Nope. We're all good. Maybe we should explain to them how to not get sick. They, um, you notice that they like look again and like one man comes over with a lantern and like holds it up in front of each one of your (coughs) and he says, were you bitten by anything or did you ingest anything that would make you feel sick? And he does this to each one of you. And then like eventually after you guys all answer, he's like, okay, open the gate. And they open the gate. You guys go into to the village. Um, it's you know pretty quiet. Uh, you make your way to the inn. There's a fair amount of villagers at the inn. Pretty busy. Um, you guys return your horses to the stables, and um, you get into the inn. Hey, find Shem. Okay. And uh, also Blingo. Oh okay. yeah, we can we can introduce him to his brother. <laughs> so you guys uh, see that the um, the red shirts are all like on their rotations for meals and guard duty right now. Um, but you guys get up to the room. Shem is there, um, and he's he looks up from his desk as you guys are there. He's like several candles burning, and he's looking at some maps and he has like a book open and you guys come in and he says, ah, welcome back. I presume that you have accomplished the task of scouting out the tower. We have. This is good. 
And? Well, how do you feel about Odious? Hmm. Quite troublesome. They are aberrations, as you likely know. Likely to have been created by the original keeper of the tower. But, alas, they can be avoided, most likely. The ODF showed us a way into the tower, potentially, by going through a window, but it feels to me like that's almost certainly a trap. Yes, the tower is quite an enigma. It is not <clears throat> certain how its former owner managed to enter and exit the tower, other than the likely guess, which in my opinion would be some form of portal or teleportation. But that seems to be tedious to simply come and go from a tower. Tell me, have you been near the tower any time? Many years ago, when I first scouted out this area, I tried to approach the tower. There are a number of magical and non-magical obstacles along the way. I feel like yes, we should have asked them all this from the start. <laughs> I think I know how you're going to answer this one, but how do you feel about magical constructs? Ah. I saw <laughs> several of those around the tower. May I assume, then, that my looking glass was useful? Very. Indeed, there is no easy way to defeat a stone golem other than destroying it, which must be done, unfortunately. To climb the tower, one must defeat the stone golem. Ah... Uh tedious as well, but not outside of the realm of possibility. And what else? Were there any flying creatures or other magical obstructions? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Right in the middle of the, the road going north, we ran into some, some blight trouble. Uh, little, little and big, like really big. Hmm. Do you remember those guys when you were here before? I may have avoided those, but I can see certainly how that could be a convenient defense mechanism against the commoners of the village. It also can you feels just like... call us common? <laughs> the lumberjack. <laughs> It also feels like an aerial entry may be dangerous as well. There were statues around the top of the tower. Yes. They I am performed not some different function. I am not certain that even with a flight spell that flying to the windows is a safe course. Nor the roof. Hmm. But Which you means no other magical creatures or effects with the looking glass. I'm I saw none with the looking glass. glass. I, I uh, don't think I saw any others either. Well, uh, there, there were some mushrooms and there were some molds to the east side of the road that should be avoided. Uh, Walking Glass did reveal those, but those were on the ground. Boars that make the Walking Dead. I don't recall anything above ground, and I don't recall anything under it. Although I suppose there must be an entry to the tower in some way. Oh, should we share our insight about the giant? How would we know or how, how would we be able to tell him where we got that info? We didn't tell him about the dryad just now, or the no longer a dryad. I guess. Are we keeping that secret? Double crossing. Uh, 
I have been doing a bit of research as well. As you can see, there was a uh, very primitive uh, crude map made um, about 150 years ago of the region. And as you can see, and he, he begins gesturing at the papers on his table, and he says, it would appear at one time that the flooded forest was not quite as flooded as it is now. In other words, the flooded forest has been progressively more flooded and defiled as time has gone on. Many suppositions are in place concerning this, but I believe that the source of this must be something within the mage tower. Any ideas on how we can get in? We're, we're coming up a little empty here. Not as of yet, but there is time. On a more positive note, my surveys of available land for purchase today were quite fruitful. And I have placed a deposit on a land purchase not far from town, a little bit too deep, which I believe should suffice for the construction of a base of operations. Good school district. I will be needing the looking glass, however, because tomorrow morning I would like to return and utilize the looking glass to make sure that there are no potential hazards. Of course. And Durant returns it. You have all done extremely well. And of course, I am appreciative of your scouting mission. Uh, please feel free to enjoy as much food and drink as you would like. I have instructed the staff at this meager inn to provide you with anything that you desire, and I shall pay for it accordingly. Thank you very I much. So, taking the liberty of instructing the men at arms to double their watch on our cargo in the barn to ensure its safety. Good. So, what next? Well, we shall have to deal with the defenses of the tower. But I believe it would be in our best interest to come up with a more strategic approach, perhaps involving combined forces to distract the guardian and attack it with the most strategic and tactical maneuver possible. Perhaps uh, the men at arms and yourselves uh, could come up with a strategy. I am weary, though. I will be retiring for the evening, so I shall see you in the morning. Thank you. And he nods to you all. So, Juan, did we did the did we give the all the 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 red shirts plus one swords? Because I'm thinking if it's anything like the the flesh golem that we learned that they're it's immune to non magical attacks. I think that all of them except one has the dwarven axes and swords that you guys didn't want. Uh, yeah, I kept one of the short swords. Right. So, like, basically one of the guys has normal weapons. The rest of them all have magical dwarven weapons, um, which is good. So, um, you guys basically have the rest of the night. Um, you have dinner, you have drinks, you have baths drawn, you get cleaned up, you feel great, you get a good night's sleep. The next morning you have breakfast, the red shirts do their rotations, um, Shem uh, goes out with two of the red shirts to survey the land. Uh, what do you guys do during the day? Uh, Durant will, of course, do his prayers and visit the local temple. 
Uh, he will also find a quiet moment to send another message to Zev Smorgelson <laughs> to uh, continue that dialogue from the last session. Excellent. A wise choice, sir. I just forget exactly where we were in that <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> Didn't he, uh, like, reply and tell you how cool it was? Yeah, and he was asking, like, he asked, like, a million questions, like, how we all were. and like, Your favorite where, color. Where he wanted yeah. to go. <laughs> things like that. So, uh, yeah, I'll send a message um, to Zev. Zev, Durant again. We are in, what's the name of this town again? That's a lot of words right there. Uh, Tavril. Tav, uh, hold on. I just had it. Tavilar. Tavilar. Everyone is well. Uh, Can you send the candle holders to Dragon Falls? Lord Trevor can handle business details. Um, Zev responds. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tabalar, what the hell are you doing up there? That's a dangerous place. There are lots of rumors about it. Yes, I'll send those things. There you go. Nail it. Okay, so we need to come up with a strategy. Um, Riff wants to uh, Riff wants to borrow our new. Sorry, it. sorry, our new um, Goodberry friend. And, oh uh, yeah, so he's grown a little bit overnight, um, and you, I'm gonna say that you were able to acquire like a clay pot, you know, so like a. a decent size you fill it with some good fertile soil and mix in some you know some some uh compost from out behind the inn freaking tug yeah. freaking okay <laughs> i want right. to and this one's go ahead twig twig is doing well he hasn't grown significantly but it looks like he's like refreshed from his overnight rest and and he he um oh well let's see who speaks uh, Riff wants to try speaking Sylvan with him and see if yeah. he understands so, it all. So he doesn't speak back, but he seems to understand. And okay. he, his twigs keep pointing towards the window. Like he wants you to move his pot. Yeah. So I, I came over there and I'm talking to him and Riff can't get out of his head the, the, the encounter with the dryad from the previous day. And um, he takes Twig over to the window and if there's sunlight coming in, he kind of holds him to that and sees if that's what he wants. Do you need some sunlight? Yes, he and, loves um, Would you like to go on a short walk with me out into the sunlight and maybe into the woods just slightly north of, of the town? I, I feel like I want to get back out there and just kind of meditate on um, what's happened. Yes, sun. And he like <laughs> flops his twigs around happily. So, guys, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go out with twig for a little while and, and um, get back out to nature some and just think about concentrating on on what happened and seeing if i can i don't know reach out and maybe make contact with some of my with my uh fey college um uh companions and so maybe twig can help me with that so we go out and uh the plan is we go on north of the village and um are the are the, are the lumberjacks still out there they're more east okay so you're you're kind of near the quiet road, so so if I see any of them, I kind of cover, I kind of hide like his eyes so he doesn't see them, yeah. and I'm like, don't worry about those guys over there. They're they're just lumberjacks and they're okay. 
Um, so don't worry about them. <laughs> I got that reference. And um, we just go out a little bit beyond there and just kind of sit in the forest, like on a stump. And um, he seems ripped. to enjoy the light coming through the forest and and the the, the stillness of the forest. Riff reaches up and scratches his um his birthmark on the back of his neck and just thinks about things. His hurricane shaped birthmark. And that's it. He's gonna be Oddly out there with specific twigs. thing to say. <laughs> I kinda want to go with scratches between two moles about an what inch lower. Your, uh, <laughs> what is your charisma? Off the charts. No, let me see. <laughs> what is your it's thirty eight. It's eighteen. <laughs> Add your charisma and your level together. Okay. 24. You, when you rub your birthmark, you mm -hmm. feel a breeze blow through the woods. There was no breeze. It was still seconds ago. What? Twig, did you feel that? That breeze? <laughs> mm -hmm. I reach up and just like scratch a little bit on, on uh, Twig's branches, like I'm scratching behind a dog's ears or something. Okay. <laughs> and, and I just, yeah. Is, is there any sense I can get, I don't know if I make a step check on a direction where the breeze came from or went to went towards the south came from the south and went like beyond okay i guess i just get up and i walk a little bit just to see if something else happens um nothing else happens okay all right i just sit back down and contemplate things in okay mixed <laughs> um estroff what are you doing want to follow riff out okay just kind of studying the plant and i want to cast plant growth on him over like an eight hour period just kind of soaking in the sun that should double his yield okay um yeah but how the hell are we gonna carry this thing oh it enriches God. him it doesn't necessarily make him grow oh but it's called plant growth well there's two ways you can use it you can either make everything grow really fast or you can make everything healthier for a year. Got it. Okay. You won this round. <laughs> it you see that Twig has Twig does grow a little bit. Um, just as a reminder. So you guys are here. Here's Tavalar. There's the Mage's Tower. There's the woods where you guys were. There's the other side of the woods where um, you didn't go because there was mold and weird things. There's the flooded forest swamp and here are the mountains um, so that breeze definitely came from the south uh, you do your plant growth and twig is just elated and just seems like healthy and strong and gets a little bit bigger but doesn't outgrow the pot but basically like gets a little bit taller and a little bit more robust and um, by the end of that cycle, Twig yields a a poultry three good berries. Nice. I think and that's pretty much that we're, pl we're plucking this off of him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not creepy, is it? It's like pimple popping. It doesn't seem to, to bother him. <sighs> um, you feel like it's because of your spells that that he was able to sprout the fruit and that it was ripe enough. But that, I, like, I, had you not intervened, it might have taken longer for him to make fruit. I do ask Twig. Uh, Twig, do you know where you come? You came from? Do you have any idea how you appeared here and who was here just before? Can you explain that to me? I'll do a, I'll do a, I'm, I'm there with him. Okay. So I'll do a speak with plants. Okay. It's a slow adventure day. Twig is so happy to be able to talk 
And the first thing he says is, I understand the elf man, the man elf. I understand him in the words he's speaking. But now, but now I can speak to you. Great. Um, could you tell it, maybe answer the question? Yes. Fuck. The lady of the greenwood. And I, I really, the lady of the, you know, Twig says the lady of the greenwood. She gave Ooh. him a gift because of the songs. The songs that the man elf spoke of. Just What's he saying? That, I'm just assuming that I'm relaying this information. What, uh, back. Are, Twig, are you the gift? Yes. Excellent. You are terrific. How how best can we can we enjoy your presence? Like sun, water, soil. Okay. An adventure. And and you're okay with us just uh, gold eating of your <laughs> of right, your gold. yield of your yield. Platinum. What what will it do? I haven't actually eaten one of your your fruits yet. What will that do for me? I feel so dirty doing it. You will, you will feel healthy. <clears throat> oh. I eat one right away. You feel like you, A, just had a meal and you gain, well, you didn't have any hit points down, but you feel like rejuvenated. Cool. It, Twig, like these are amazing. Power. It's like you had a power smoothie combined with a protein shake. Like you're like, I feel great. Like <laughs> you're just sizzling with vitamins. Um, Antioxidants everywhere. Twigs <laughs> very pleased. And he, he tells Acker, he's like, he's like, yes, our fruits are special and they're a gift. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. Twig. Is there anything that we can do for you besides? Water, dirt, and sun? Yes. Not fire. We will not, we will not, we will not put you on fire. <laughs> yeah. Not on purpose. <laughs> right. That <would> Deal. <laughs> right. Unless you have fire them out of a can. We, we need to introduce Blingo and Twig. So Blingo's going to ruin the whole thing. Blingo's going to kill Twig. Twig talks to Acker and says... Uh, why did the man elf call upon the king? Ask him. Okay. The man elf. And he points his twigs at, at Riff. The man elf. Okay. And I. A man and an elf. He's a man elf. Okay. The man elf. So I would uh, relay that to Riff. What king are you talking about, Twig? The Mountain King. Didn't you feel his breath when you called on him? Wow. I did feel that. It wasn't it wasn't what I who I thought I was trying to get in touch with. Well, who did you think you would get in touch with? Maybe maybe somebody from the Feywild, um, some of my my mentors there um, that taught me some of my my skills. You are marked. That I am. Do you not know what your mark is? I just know that I've had that since I was born. I've always had this mark. I've followed it. It helped it helped me find college. Um, it helped me it led me to a portal to the Fate Wild once. But that's all. I, I I don't know really how to to listen oh. to it or use it. I wonder if I wonder if Rip has any influence over over the the mage. Turns around. Don't make me use this. Twig, Twig, what what was the king <laughs> trying to trying to what kind of message was he sending me? I don't know. I just felt his breath. And you know it was the king of the mountain. <laughs> How do you know it was his breath? Well, yes. What else would make such a powerful breath from so far away? It could have just been the wind there, buddy. There was no wind. That was the breath of the Sleeping King. Okay. Oh, great. I'm going to wake the Sleeping King, guys. 
<laughs> if I wasn't busy casting a spell for eight hours, I might recommend that you try that. <laughs> well, we'll have to think on this because maybe he would be a powerful ally and um, yeah, we have, up against the mage tower. I feel like we have two directions here. <laughs> we could either go, we could either go the the king, the sleeping king route. Or we can go the like, full frontal assault with a red shirt says fodder route. Just there... you have those are just two of many options. <laughs> we have so many <laughs> ways to die. This is <laughs> this is outstanding. <laughs> I'm super of a of an open world campaign. Well, Durant <laughs> is is not there and has not seen any of this transpire. That is true. Uh, so back in town. Um, I'm going to use my researcher capability from my background to try and locate um, like land surveys from about 150 years ago. Ooh. Okay. All right. I will let you go ahead and make the investigation check as you're doing your research. Um. Now, I will say that, as you can surmise, the village of Tavilar is not the most well-stocked on uh, books, but there are some ledgers um, that you are able to peruse. You can't check them out, but you can speak with the village clerk about looking at them. And um, you are also, throughout the course of the day, um, you may also look over some of the uh, deeds that uh, are kept on record by the uh, Carpenters Guild. So between those two resources, um, you may proceed. I only rolled a 15, so it wasn't that great. All right, it's not bad. So essentially you see that at, at a certain point, there were apparently... Uh, more people living around Tavalar than there are now. So kind of surprisingly, like the population has shrunk. Uh, but 150 years ago, the population was actually double. And there were a lot more farmsteads all around Tavalar. And a lot of small cottages uh, where people lived. There were actually lords from Ilrafan who had purchased property um, south of the road along the mountains uh, and had claims, mining claims. And as you compare that to the current records, you see that uh, many of those things are no longer around anymore. Hmm. Interesting. Although the records don't really indicate why. They don't really indicate why those places were abandoned or why the population shrunk. So if we went looking, we'd probably find some abandoned buildings in these areas, though. Uh, yeah, likely. Uh, so in, in my notebook, I'm just going to kind of sketch a map of areas of significant decline between the two eras. Okay. And maybe jot down some approximate dates. Okay. You do. And that's how I'm going to spend my day. Okay. So to wrap up at the end of the day, you guys reconvene at the end. Um, do you kind of share all of your various mutually gained information and knowledge? Excellent. Perfect. Then that is where we'll end this session of D&D &D with Dads. Tune in to find out who lives and who dies. Well, hello, it's me, Wizzy. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. And then don't forget to tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and crafting videos and DM tips and pro tips for vlogging and all sorts of gaming things. And also you could watch Bill eat food and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. 
Okay, bye.